Kenny Smith walks back what he said about Jalen Brunson, and I'm here to break it all down. All that and much more on the Knicks Digest. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Dario, from Knicks Digest. It's been a while since I had a solo video, but Kenny Smith, a few days ago, was on the Stephen A. Smith show, and one of the topics they talked about was Jalen Brunson and the resurging Knicks. So Kenny Smith, at the beginning of the season, he also did a video on it. He went down the list of the Eastern Conference teams, talking about Cleveland, talking about Orlando, Boston, Milwaukee, saying how Jalen Brunson is not the best player on the floor in any of those uh, hypothetical playoff series. He even said that when he brought up the Orlando Magic with Paolo Bancaro. But if we take a look here into the quote when he was on the Stephen A. Smith show, beginning of the year I said they always have the second best player, but Brunson has narrowed the, gra the gap so much, talented guys behind him, MVP candidates, he's in the top five. Maybe he's not Embiid, Giannis, but he makes winning plays. Now, again, Kenny Smith, earlier in the year, he went down the list of Eastern Conference teams that if the Knicks hypothetically went up to went up in a playoff matchup, that Jalen Brunson would be the second or third best player on the team. He, he talked about... Milwaukee, which Giannis would undoubtedly be the best player on the floor. But then if we're talking about Milwaukee, let's take a look at the second best player on the floor, which would be Damian Lillard. If we're talking about Milwaukee, that second best player on the floor to me is up for grabs. It'll be between Damian Lillard and Jalen Brunson. And up until this point, right now, Damian Lillard has had an underwhelming first half of the season. That's been a lot of the talk after Damian Lillard won his MVP at the All-Star Game, saying that he pretty much he just took out his frustration on the game and how how the Milwaukee Bucks aren't really going down the, the way that he expected them to. And Jalen Brunson for the first half of the season has been, even though in the last five games, the Knicks have hit a little bit of a skid, but that's more due to injuries rather than uh, on-court play. Me personally, I would actually put Jalen Brunson as the second best player on the court if hypothetically they go up against the Milwaukee Bucks. Kenny Smith also mentioned the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kenny Smith said that Donovan Mitchell would undoubtedly be the best player on the floor. Chris and I, we have talked about this at length. Donovan Mitchell, talent-wise, athletic-wise, yes, he would be the best player on the floor. But if we take into account what his career has been up to this far, take into account what has he done, it's been underwhelming. Jalen Brunson, we take into account what he has done th thus far. Again, in the Dallas series, when Luka went out against the Phoenix Suns, Jalen Brunson, I believe, had two or three games. I believe it was two games where he was the starting point guard. He showed what he was able to do. He showed his potential. And then last season, the first time being a New York Knick, um, bringing the Knicks past the first round into the second round, losing in six to Miami, beating the Cleveland Cavaliers, who was led by who were led by Donovan Mitchell, beating the Cavs in five games. In my opinion, if they were to go up against the Cleveland Cavaliers, Jalen Brunson to me would be the best player on the floor. And I know in the comments, some of you guys might be going at my neck saying, "How can you say that? How can you take Brunson over Donovan Mitchell when Donovan Mitchell has made this many All Star games?" But to me, it's not about the all-star games. It's not about on paper what it says. I am a little bit old school and I like to go by with what I see with my own eyes. I know that this generation is very, very heavily on analytics. And you talk about the field goal percentage from this area on the floor, the field goal percentage on, I don't know, the, the stats that they keep coming up with is like, I don't know how they even started to think about tracking this. But like I said, I'm a little bit old school and I like to go with what my eyes see. I go with the eye test. And from what I've seen from Donovan Mitchell's career to Jalen Brunson's career, I take Jalen Brunson over Donovan Mitchell. Now, Kenny Smith also said he brought up the Orlando Magic, who is a young and up and coming team. They have really nice pieces. They have the rookie of the year, Paolo Bancaro, which the last game of the first half of the season, the Knicks went into Orlando and unfortunately they lost. But in the post game video that I did, one of the highlights that I talked about was Paolo Bancaro and how much of a problem that guy is going to be once he gets more experience, once he gets into the playoffs and see what that intensity is like. Paolo Bancaro is going to be a huge problem. But Kenny Smith, the beginning of the season or early in the season, he said that hypothetically, right now, if the Orlando Magic were to go up against the New York Knicks, Paolo Bancaro would be the best player on the floor, which is absolutely ridiculous, ludicrous. Any word that you can think of to describe that, that statement is utterly insane. 
Paolo Bancaro has had one season under his belt, hasn't even made a playoffs, and right now they're in the play-in position. The season ended right now. It's not even a guaranteed lock that they'd make the playoffs. Right now they're an eighth seed, so Paolo Bancaro doesn't even have enough experience to be in the conversation, hypothetically, if the Orlando Magic went up against the New York Knicks in a playoff situation. The Knicks would have the best player, the first two, maybe even three best players on the floor with Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, and the third maybe being... I don't know, maybe even Dante DiVincenzo, who's had more experience than any of the Orlando Magic players. The Orlando Magic players, from the top of my head, freestyling, you got the Wagner brothers, Mo and Franz. Franz is a really, really gem of a player. Um, you got Gary Harris, you got Jonathan Isaac, who, if he could stay healthy, could be a huge defensive anchor, but that's been one of the, his knocks in his career, that he just can't stay healthy. Um, you got Markel Fultz, you got veteran leadership with Joe Ingles, and he's still, even though he's up there in age, he can still hit that three at a pretty, pretty high clip. So the Orlando Magic, they do have the pieces to hypothetically, if they were in a playoff situation with the Knicks, to maybe make it competitive, but experience is such a huge tool and a lot of those Orlando Magic players the starting five the players that they really depend on and that are going to be built upon the foundation they don't have the playoff experience so Kenny Smith bringing up Orlando Magic and Paolo Bancaro is I still can't get over that but seeing how Kenny Smith was on the Stephen A. Smith show and he started to walk back what he said because of Jalen Brunson's play for the first half of the season I mean he better have he better have said that because if not, then all of the Knicks fans were going to be in his YouTube co comments, in his Instagram comments, just going crazy on him. But speaking of Jalen Brunson, of course I got to bring up the numbers. If we're talking this season, so far he's averaging 20, 27 and a half points, 3.8 rebounds, which is I'm going to round that up to four, six and a half assists, uh, shooting 48 percent from the field, 41 uh, percent from three, and converting 83.5 of his free throw attempts. Now. Before the All-Star break, the Knicks' last five games, unfortunately, we were 1-4, and, and a majority of that was because of injuries. We didn't have Isaiah Hartenstein. We didn't have Big Mitch, obviously, because of the ankle surgery. Julius Randle is still recovering from that shoulder injury. Chris just put out a video talking about an update, so go check out that video if you want to know what's, up, what's been going on with uh, Julius Randle. Dante DiVincenzo, I believe, missed a game or two because of his hamstring injury. OG Ananobi, of course, had that elbow inflammation, and he actually had surgery to remove a bone spur that was causing inflammation. So the last five games wasn't the best um, Knicks outing. We desperately needed that break. We needed to at least get some bodies back into the rotation. But the last five games, Jalen Brunson, he was averaging 32.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, 7 assists. And now the last five games, they were against the Lakers, Memphis Grizzlies, Indiana Pacers, Houston Rockets, Orlando Magic. With the talent that the Knicks and Jalen Brunson had available to them, I can see why the record was what it was. Um, the Memphis Grizzlies is in abysmal of a team right now, no disrespect. Um, John Morant went out with a shoulder injury. They pretty much just threw up the white flag, and they're going to be looking towards next season to try and make a, really make a run. The first game of the five games were against, was against the Lakers. LeBron coming to MSG. Anthony Davis, you know, it's going to be a thing. And you know LeBron wants to put on the show. Um, and they pretty much show the rest of the NBA how to, how to defend Jalen Brunson, which is basically whenever he touches the ball, double team him and make somebody else beat us. Um, hopefully, uh, for the rest of the season, teams don't do that. So Jalen Brunson can get his numbers off, but yeah, so it was the Lakers, which was a loss. And then it was the Memphis Grizzlies, which was the only win in this five game stretch. And then it was at home in Indiana, which was a Saturday night game. They lost 111 to 125. Indiana Pacers, man, um, young, spry, athletic. They like to get up and down the court. And again, the injuries that we were dealing with, um, it was pretty hard to keep up with them. The game after that was at Houston, which in my opinion, I think we could have won, but we ended up losing. And of course, there was that egregious call by the referee. I can't think of his name right now, but the Knicks ended up putting in a protest. And we still have to, we still have yet to hear about what exactly is going to happen with that protest. If the league is going to allow the Knicks in Houston to play a five minute overtime game. So we don't know what's the issue with that. Um, but that could have been a W. But unfortunately, as of right now, it's an L. And the last game was at Orlando, was which we lost 100 to 118. Um, and like, like I just uh, talked about, Orlando is a young and up-and-coming team, athletic. Um, I like what the pieces they have. Their best player, Paolo Bancaro, is a 6'10 point forward who can handle the rock, who can shoot, who can hit the three, put the ball on the floor. He's going to be a real, real special player the more experience he gets.
But all in all, Kenny Smith walking back what he said was much obliged, was much needed because if he just let if he just let that clip go for the rest of the season, Jalen Brunson, of course, we know that they're gonna get to the playoffs. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, I don't jinx them. But Jalen Brunson and the Knicks being in the playoffs, you know, Jalen Brunson actually shows up when the spotlight is at its brightest. So again, Kenny Smith having those comments just out in the atmosphere. And if he didn't retract his statement, the Knicks fans were going to be in his comments, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever social media account he has, the Knicks fans were going to go crazy. But as far as right now, Kenny Smith did the right thing, retracted his statement, and for now, we're going to let him breathe. But guys, that's it for today's video. I want to say thank you for checking it out. Leave it in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about Kenny Smith retracting his statement. But until next time, you guys know the vibe. You guys know the drill. Taj Gibson for president. Jalen Brunson for NBA regular season MVP and finals MVP. Let's go. Knicks, baby. Peace.